Here at H3 Technology, we play a lot of chess. We own a lot of chess sets. Here's one of them. It's just a standard chess set that you can order off the internet at a low price. Its pieces are made of plastic. Well, we decided to make our own chess set, print the pieces, and then cast them out of metal. We decided to go for a classical look, similar to what you're seeing here. So the first step is to design the pieces. We used an application called SOLIDWORKS to design our chess pieces. Now keep in mind when you design your piece that it has to be pulled out of a mold. So you can't have one that has a large lip on top because it just wouldn't fit. The silicone that we're using is flexible and this particular piece right here, the queen, can fit through even though the top of it flares out a bit from the bottom. Also keep in mind that when you design the pieces, metal has to fit in each of these tiny little slots that you create. So we have a little knob there on the top that you can see. But keep that in mind because if it's too small or there's a strange angle, it's highly unlikely the metal will flow into it. Okay, now that we've finished designing it, let's move on to the next step. We fired up our 3D printer to print them out. Keep in mind that because these pieces are only going to be used to create a mold, the color of the filament doesn't matter. You don't need a very expensive or elaborate 3D printer to make this work. This is one that we picked up several years ago for a few hundred dollars. Alright, we'll go ahead and speed this up so you can see the final product. And here's their pawn. Oh, it turned out pretty good. Now we just have to print the rest of the pieces. Now that we got our pieces done, we need to find a container that will fit the pieces that we used to pour the mold in. We've decided on these cheap cups. So here's our biggest piece and our smallest piece. And as you can see, they'll both fit in there. We also chose these plastic cups because they're easy to tear away from the mold. So go ahead and do a dry fit. Make sure that everything looks good in there. Yep, there's plenty of room to fill the mold around the piece. All right. Now that we got that done, we can start thinking about the mold. Now, what we're doing now is putting a little bit of hot glue on these pieces because you don't want them to shift when you pour the mold. So just a little hot, hot glue on the bottom. Press them in there. This is the bishop. Yep, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and center that in there. Now we used a two-part mold, and these are big buckets. You can get smaller buckets. Now when you pour the mold, make sure you follow all the safety procedures because this stuff can get sticky and messy. We re recommend that you do this outside. Just one part of each mold. We just pour them into these cups. That way we can, we can easily mix them. And the one to one ratio also makes it easier to mix. Now that we got some poured out from the bigger containers, just use a measuring cup to mix them together. One to one ratio, stir it. Here's the, looks like the pawn. So when you pour the mix into the cup, make sure you do it slowly. This will help work out any air bubbles that accumulate. So depending on the type of mold that you get, it'll take several hours to cure. Ours recommended four hours. And when you press on it, it's firm, but not hard. All these look like they're done, and they've cured the proper amount of time. So the next step is to rip the paper cup off the mold. Remember that we suggested before getting something that's easy to remove from the mold. So because of the lining of these paper cups, it's easy to remove them from the mold. Just go ahead and use your hands and rip them off. They should tear off pretty easily. You can see at the bottom of the mold where a little bit of the paper stuck to the hot glue that we put on the bottom of the piece. This won't present a problem. We just need to peel it off a little bit. Now this is the most difficult part of the project, getting these pieces out. 
as we mentioned before when we were designing these pieces you need to make sure that they can be removed from a mold depending on their shape there wasn't one particular technique that we found was the easiest here other than brute force getting these pieces out will definitely test your wrist strength after struggling for a little bit we decided to use a different technique we had to use channel locks to get some pieces out it was still a two-person project one person to hold the mold the other person to yank out the piece and the piece looks intact that's pretty good so if you have to pull it out with channel locks it's a good idea to look in the mold and make sure it wasn't damaged in this case everything looks good one by one pull all of the pieces out of the mold whether it's with your hands or with channel locks and as mentioned before inspect the mold to make sure that it wasn't damaged now we labeled all of our molds because we have to pour multiple pieces for the pawn, the bishops, the knight, and rook. Now that we got them all out, let's go ahead and line them up for you. That way you can see our design. You notice that the rook and the queen use similar castellated top. All right, I think we're ready to pour some metal. Let's move on to the next step. Now it's time to prepare the mold to receive metal. The instructions suggested a release agent, such as talcum powder, so that's what we chose because it's cheap and readily available. Just tap a bunch into the mold and shake it around so the interior is covered. When we chose our silicone mold, we made sure that it could withstand certain temperatures. And for this, we're using a metal that has a low melting point. So low, in fact, that you can melt it in a cast iron skillet. The skillet that you see here has been repurposed just for melting metal. We're not going to use it to do any cooking. We had to turn the burner up to medium high, and then after several minutes, the metal was ready to pour. We'll go ahead and speed up this process. Make sure you follow all recommended safety precautions when pouring the metal. Now when you pour the metal into the mold, you're not going to pour it into the very top because there's a little bit of lip where you, where we glued the piece to the bottom of the paper cup. That should be good right about there. All right, one down, several to go. Now that we've finished pouring all the metal, the next step is just to let it cool down. This will take a few hours depending on how hot the metal had to get and the temperature outside. But once everything's cool, you can go ahead and pull out the pieces. Now, depending on the shape of the pieces, it might be easy just to pop it out just like that one. And in some cases, we had to go back and use the channel locks. This rook looks pretty good. You can see the castellated design on top. Not every piece came out easily. We had to use channel locks to get the knight out. It's a regular shape, makes it hard to get out of a mold. But the end result was worth it. We got all the pieces out of the mold, so we'll line them up to show you how they turned out. The lines look really sharp, and the tops of the rook and queen look really good. We made the top of the king, the cross on there, big enough so metal could fit in there. We think it turned out nicely. There's just a little bit more work to do, and we'll do that in the next section. The final step is to file down the bottom of the pieces so they fit flat on the board. Since this is a soft metal that we're working with, a hand file was enough to do the job. And here's the final product. You can see these turned out great we're really happy with the results. But you might be wondering, what about the other side of the board? Well, that's the topic of part two of this project. We're going to use a different colored metal one that has a much higher melting temperature. Until then, if you have any comments, please leave them below. And thanks for watching.